Hello guys and welcome back to Dark Horse FM and in today's video we're going to be covering Opposition Instructions or for short OIs. Opposition Instructions are a crucial part of Football Manager especially in FM 2022. It's something I've noticed has helped me get very good results in this game so far and while I started this video I actually realized that most of the saves that I had was already at the end of the season so it turns out I, um, I found my Hereford save from previous one of my previous um, Football Manager challenges and then we have a friendly game coming up against Hereford, so I turned out okay. I'm actually use this friendly to show you guys how I applied um, how I apply opposition instructions and how they work. So if you're new to the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button to get notifications when new videos come up, and also to leave a like if you actually find this video useful. It also helps the video you know get shared to other friends and everything on YouTube. Now there are many ways you can apply opposition instructions. Generally, sometimes I like to leave this to the assistant, provided my my assistant manager is quite good at his job that he has good technical abilities to actually help us with technical advice basically so looking at my assistant manager here Luke some of you that hair foot he is well for a lower league manager he actually has good tactical knowledge and good judging of player ability so these are the attributes you need to look for in your assistant manager good judging of player ability and then the tactical knowledge potential it's probably more important for your team but for the opposition judging player ability is actually more important and then tactical knowledge as well so you can get those attributes up the higher they are the better your opposition instructions are going to be from your assistant manager while it's possible that if you're in the lower leagues with a team like hereford for example my assistant manager is actually a gem so it's strange how i actually got to employ him anyway but if you're in the lower leagues you're probably going to have an assistant manager that doesn't have that much or that doesn't have good technical ability so i'm going to try and show you how to apply the technical attributes or to apply the opposition instructions in case you have an assistant manager that isn't exactly good at his job so again we're going to head into the opposition instruction screen then quickly we're just going to go into the tactic this is the current tactic that i'm using i'm probably going to scrap this at some point is the title is the pure green but that's a video for another day basically so look looking to tear this up we're going to just clear that slot and then create a brand new tactic because that's what, that's what is going to be important for trying to apply our opposition instructions and then looking at this tactic it's a flat for 4 it's meaningless no instruction set whatsoever going into the opposition instructions and this is the part that is also very important it's also one of the first things you need to look at when you're trying to prepare your team for the opposition you're going to look at the formation that your opposition is using currently more come applying to play a 4-1-2-3 that's if a traditional 4 2 3 that's a three-pronged attack so that's how i'm expecting them to line up and then you can see these three um chat boxes here james brophy would be shown less this is your assistant manager now giving you hints as to who should be shown onto which onto which weaker foot and then who should be trigger pressed and then that brings us to another thing we have to look at in opposition instruction when you're in the opposition instruction page it is divided into four actions the first is type marking which player is supposed to show on type marking and that's this column here the second is the trigger press this is how soon your players are going to look to engage the opposition and try to win the ball back from them or in case cause them to make mistakes on the ball and be loose and give away possession the third column on this list is tackling this is how hard or how soft your team goes to win the ball back or challenges the opposition to try to win the ball back there are players that are a lot more physical so you can ask your players to probably go hard on them or it depends on how the opposition basically sets up itself sometimes and this is for defenders soft and normal tackles don't really work that much on them so you're going to have to go hard on defenders but then the strikers you can't really go hard on the strikers and the central midfielders because more often than not if the central midfielder isn't strong enough it's there's a possibility that you can get your player sent off on a red card something like that the tackle can be too hard on him and he can come off us or let's say the opposition may not be able to take that tackle very easily you could enjoy him it could be called dangerous play so i tend to give the midfielders normal tackling for some reason and then the last column before i sidetrack too much the last column is the show on to weaker foot this covers how you want your player to try and block the opposition and in what angle he's supposed to block the opposition that's what show on to weaker foot means so if the player for example is a left-footed player showing him onto his right foot makes him you it means you're covering his left hand side and you're showing him onto his right side it means you're blocking the range of passing or the crossing range from his left foot that way he's forced to use his right foot you're kind of showing him you're pressing him from his separate angle let's show you how it works so assuming that more can stick to the predicted lineup this is how we're going to shape up this is how they're going to shape up and then assuming that we're using our flat 442 this is how we're going to set up against them now the way show onto weaker foot works is supposed that my i'm supposing that my winger 
this player here is supposed to close down the fullback and then my strikers are trying to close down the central defenders for some reason in an, in an ideal scenario where what show on to weaker foot means is the right back assuming that the right back is a right-footed player my uh, my f my winger here is going to tend to block his right foot and then try to bring him inside just showing him onto his left foot that's you're allowing him to use his left foot when you're blocking the right hand side and if you're showing him let's say he's a right back and then he's playing as an inverted winger and then you have the idea that he's playing as an inverted winger you show him onto his you show him onto his left foot right that way you're trying to bring him out wide and i ideally if you, this is the setting where you want to try and press and try and show the opposition outside and you're showing him onto his left onto his right side because that's his weaker foot you tend to press him from this angle that way he's going all this way and then he's not allowed to come inside and be a regular inverted wing back even though that's the role that his manager has asked him to play ideally he's still going to try and get in here because that's his role but he's going to face a barricade which is the left winger here that's trying to show him onto his onto his um, weaker side let's say that's the weaker side is his right side you're forcing him to go out wide and then you're pressing him from the left hand side which is his ideally his stronger foot anyway now that we know what all the four columns mean let's start seeing how we can apply this to the opposition's team the next thing you want to do after knowing the formation that they are setting up is to try and look at the player attributes of the opposition this is how you know who you're going to trigger press and who you're going to type mark and that's how i normally do it for example using morecambe and looking at the morecambe lineup ryan mclaughlin Mike Ryan McLaughlin is playing as their right back or is expected to play as their right back. He is right back in this team anyway. And then looking at his attributes, I can see that he's aggressive and then he has good anticipation, good bravery, good composure as well. So he's not the player I'm going to want to press because he can, he's actually good on the ball. He's composed on the ball. He's not going to easily give up the ball. But looking at his decision making, he has decision making of between 5 and 9. So I'm expecting that he's not going to make the best decision when passing the ball out. So he's one player I'm going to want to type mark but i'm not going to trick or press him that much looking at the next player that we have here is ashley eastham ashley eastham has also good composure and good pressing and then i realized that his composure and concentration for central defenders really tends to be high because they kind of read the game very well so there are players that i don't really want to always press unless they are it's absolutely glaring that we can press him and take advantage of him daniel dot is just as similar he has slightly higher composure as well but looking at james brophy on the other hand his concentration is not that good and then his aggressive is not that his aggression is not that high as well so this is one player i'm going to want to trigger press and try and win the ball off him quickly enough and while trigger pressing this james brophy for example turn on the trigger press for james brophy you can type mark the closest player to him that's daniel dodds if i can type mark this guy i'm also expecting that the goalkeeper is trying to play out from the back and if the goalkeeper is going to play out from the back he's going to see that daniel dodds is marked and he will likely play the ball to james brophy Ideally, what I'm just showing you right now is it can happen in game as well. If you're watching the match and then you see the goalkeeper tend to play the ball to a certain player when playing out from the back, you can type mark that player and then trigger press the player that is closest to him. That way, the goalkeeper will see that his preferred option is type marked, and then you try and play to somebody that has lower mental attributes, and then you can trigger press that player and try and win the ball back early from him. When it comes to showing defenders to their weaker foot, that tends to try and influence the defender's decision to try and bring the ball into certain areas of the field now you have had if i have good players out wide and then i want the defender to go out wide i tend to close the middle of the field and type mark most of the central players like the defensive midfielder as well you can put him on type marking forcing the defense and then the goalkeeper as well to play the ball to wider players and then we can press the wide areas and try and win the ball from there looking with showing on to weaker foot i'm going for full backs personally showing on to weaker foot i tend to show the player that has the highest ability the highest crossing ability i tend to show that player onto his weaker foot looking at james brophy for example his crossing is between 5 and 11. i like that football manager does this and mask the attribute is quite interesting so looking at ryan mclaughlin the other fullback his dribbling is a lot higher so i'm expecting that although we don't know what his crossing is i'm on, i'm guessing that his crossing is good if he has good dribbling and he can also get forward james brophy has slightly more is more physical because he can actually get forward a lot more his acceleration and pace as well is good and then he's probably going to be the one player that i'm going to want to try and close down even though his crossing is between 5 and 11. so he's going to be the one trying to get forward as you can see and james Bruffin also is the player that will likely get forward anywhere and then ryan mclaughlin and also something i also check with jim right is how the player's positioning is shaped on the field brophy and mclaughlin they probably look like they are on the same line 
But more often than not, in the match, when you're looking at the game, the player's formation shape, if this player is on at attack duty, his starting position is going to be slightly higher than the other player if he's if this other player is on support duty. Both of them are slightly higher, you know that they are both playing on attack duty. So tend to show onto weaker foot the player that you're expecting to be the one to try and cross the ball, the player that is the attacking outlet, the fullback that is the attacking outlet. I trying to close these players down and show them to their weaker foot. And in the, ideally when you're watching the match you'll probably see the player that is causing you problems. And then you can show them onto their weaker foot and trigger press them as well. Another player I tend to pay attention to is the defensive midfielder. That's what looking at the 4-3-3 in detail right now. Looking at the defensive midfielder Alex Denny, sometimes the goalkeeper tends to play a ball out to the defensive midfielder and we're guessing that the defensive midfielder sometimes can be the quarterback in the team, the, def the deep line playmaker in the team and that he, he also sometimes can be the player that receives the ball from the goalkeeper. Putting this guy on trigger press, putting the trigger press on the defensive midfielder can help you stop the attack at source and stop the team from building up from the back. If you don't want to trigger press him or if he's not the, if he's not the best player f or if he's a better player physically and you don't want to trigger press him, assuming that you're facing a player like Rodri, you can't really trigger press Rodri because he's very good on the ball and then he can retain possession of the ball and leave your midfielder and attacker, anybody that pressed him anyway, leave those players for dead and try and transition the ball to other creative players. So a player like Rodri, you, you might not want to trigger press him and then you can just put him on tight marking to stop the team from trying to play the ball through him and then they can have to choose other options to try and play out from the back. But for this case, I'm going to leave Alex Denny on, I'm going to leave Alex Denny with the trigger press on him and looking at his physical attributes, we can see that he has good determination, but then I can't tell what his composure and contrast, um, concentration are. But I know that he's not the fastest and his flair is not very, he's not very good at dribbling, so he can't dribble past me anyway. So he's one player I know that with this pace, I can trigger press him and get to him early and stop him at source. Now for the harder part to try and deal with, the midfield and the attack. In midfield, the first thing I tend to look for is a player that has a good passing range. This is the player that, I'm, I, that ideally want to type mark. The player that has good passing is between 7 and 13, Louis Simpa. Looking at Ryan Crossdale, Ryan Crossdale has passing 7 and 12. So ideally, both of these two players, are, can either of them can be the playmaker. So when you're in game, you probably have to watch and see who is playing as the play who is the player that is creating chances a lot more that is let's say the player that is creating more key passes but either of them in there's some teams like manchester city either of them could be both playmakers so you have to figure out who you're going to try and type mark but pick one of the central midfielders ideally the one that has the highest passing range and put him on type marking once you put him on type marking it's clear that the team is going to try to avoid him knowing that there's one player marking him and if he's very good on the ball he might try and get past you but putting one player on the playmaker type marking one of the playmakers helps you stop the opposition's creative ability somehow and then just keep them at bay and try and control them you would notice that i added some normal tackling for the midfielder i tend to do that as well if the player is on type marking you can also put him on normal tackling i choose normal tackling because i know most of the time the assistant manager if you do on a, a suggestion the assistant manager can tell you to use hard tackling but sometimes for midfielders i normally use normal tackling because i prefer to have yellow cards than to have one of my players sent off so normal tackling tends to work for me as well so just put one of the midfielders on type marking and then when it comes to the attack between the fingers let's say the two wide players in attack one of the in football manager 2022 most players now can play as inside forwards in the lower leagues even in the lower leagues where you would expect the wide player to play as a traditional winger in his role he also has the ability to cut inside and cause you problems so if you notice that the player playing on the left hand side has a good right foot ability he's good with his right foot he's playing as an inverted winger so you want to show him onto his weaker foot which is his left foot even though he's playing on the left hand side force him out wide because he will not be able to cut back and make that pass so just showing showing him out wide stops him from creating chances the way he knows how to do in attack there's always a debate whether you should put your the striker the opposition striker on type marking or to leave him because if we leave if you set type marking for the central striker in the opposition's team Ideally, one of your defensive midfielder is going to be the one to type mark him. And then if, if this player tends to roam away from this position and drop in deeper, that leaves your defense open because one of your central defenders is going to follow him once you put him on type marking. So what I normally do for the central strikers is just leave them black and stop the stop all the passes and all the crosses and anything getting to them. Stop the supply. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Stop the supply from getting to them as opposed to putting them on type marking. When there are two, that's where it's more tricky. 
when there are two strikers, what I tend to do is to try and stop one of the strikers, put them on type marking. I did one of the strikers will likely be more creative than the other, and then the other is probably going to be a finisher or a tall target man. So when they are playing two strikers up front, one of them is going to be more creative, and that's the player that you want to put on type marking. Once you put him on type marking, you can let you can let the other guy be, expecting that he's not going to get any supplies. And what another thing that is most important while you're applying these changes, watch the match and see what is happening and see how those changes are affecting the game. If you see something that you don't like, just change it. So we're going to go into the game against Morecambe and then we'll see how this little opposition instruction that I applied work out for the team. You notice that I added more tackling for my for the midfielder and then the uh, the winger on the right hand side for the price. This winger on the right hand side has a weak foot. His weaker foot is his left foot. So both wingers in Morecambe are playing as wingers because they are wide players and then they both have good. They're both good with their right foot. One of them, sorry, have a um, for the price is playing as a winger on the right hand side and then Saunders. Harvey Saunders also has a good right foot. You're going to see it here. Harvey Saunders' right foot is actually very good, very strong right foot, but then he's playing on the left. So I know that he's playing as an inverted winger. So what I did for Harvey Saunders was to include the left foot, show him onto his left foot. That means I'm going to try and force him out wide to try and stop him from cutting inside and playing those passes or trying to take a shot at goal. So we're going to see how this opposition instruction works against Morecambe. So for my flat 4-4-2, I've kind of created a simple tactic based on that 4-4-2 and then I've put some players in their positions. I'm using a deep line playmaker and a central midfielder now. There are no instructions for anybody, no instructions for the team. It's just a blank tactic that we're going to see how it helps um, or how it works using those opposition instructions. Hold on, I'm supposed to just sub somebody real quick. Let me just find this lad. Ashley, see where you at. He is unhappy because I'm using one of the white areas. I don't know why I keep stopping the wrong person. Ashley, see Thank you. So one advance forward, one pressing forward, two wingers, one on, one on attack, one on support, two fullbacks on support, two standard central defenders, and one standard goalkeeper. So that's what we're going to be using to try and play against Mokom using their traditional system that they have. So we are live in the game here against Mokom. So we just have to submit our team and then hopefully we'll see, to see how everything works. So I've selected only 10 field players out of my outfield players. So we're going to have to fix that already. So quick pick, not really. Going to my best player on the list. We can have Greg Taylor. This is already playing. Then there's Sam Packham and Tommy Holmes. Tommy Holmes is actually a young player. So hopefully he's going to actually have a good day today. But this is probably not the ideal squad you want to use to test out opposition instructions, but fair enough. Let's just see how that works out. Everybody's complaining about everything, so we're going to see if the opposition instructions actually helps us get a good result today. We're going to see how it works out. So, so far so good. Morkum hasn't had any chances as yet, but we had one shot and then one of them is on target. And looking at how we're playing, 22 minutes, 23 minutes, I'm just waiting for the first highlight. Okay, here we are. One of the highlights is in and hopefully with this you can actually see how the OIs work. Spittle out wide, pinch out, cool yeah. oops, he's missed that. I think I should swap to comprehensive highlights right now so we can actually get the best idea or to see how everything is working out. I'm moving this to the side, okay. Oh, Simpa is two on go, blocked. So just looking at how everything is going, I'm probably going to get a chance and then we can see most of our players are already in shape. You can see McLaughlin trying to show him onto his left hand side there and then we've already won possession. Then there's Banjay. Kuya out wide. Again to Pritchard. Kuya again. He should give that through the ball. Oh, I don't instructions for him to do that. Ashley Seal. Oh, he's missed it. So no instructions whatsoever. My team seems to be playing well. Mm. I'm probably going to attribute that to the OIs. And there's Thompson. Oh, it's offside. Okay, let's see how everybody goes. And funny thing about opposition instructions, while you're trying to apply opposition instructions for yourself, the AI is doing the same thing to you. So this is where opposition instructions are quite important. You have to actually, yeah, you have to actually apply for your team as well, just like the AI is applying the opposition instructions for you. So we tend to have the ball a lot. There's Banjay trying to create that chance. He's trying to make that run and the AI is blocking him. Uh, you can see that the AI is actually showing showing Kuya to his weak and to his stronger side for some reason and then he actually is able to make that cross uh, good they've actually won possession so let's see how our players react it's showing him onto his weaker side he's just blocked that cross and then the player had to stop and then turn back and pass the ball inside so that's when that's where showing him onto his weaker foot actually helps for the fullback 
and sometimes you can apply these instructions to the fullbacks as well if you expect that the fullback is going to be the one crossing the ball so half time then and no goals not, not even from Morecambe and I expected Morecambe to have scored like two goals by now I don't know how this how it's possible that we've not considered any goal yet but apparently I'm going to give thanks to the opposition instructions I set because I'm using very weakened side right now good recovery from Morris there there's Pinchard, Thompson to Holmes sorry and you can see the AI is frustrated looking at the team stats where is there oh I can't find it I kind of blocking this Pinchard, Kuya, Thompson, Kuya. Oh, he's missed it. Hopefully, there's going to be a chance to actually see if Spito has it now. So we've had we've had more campaign back quite well because it seems we're winning the war we're winning the ball back in key areas. So that the opposition instructions are applied really helps. You can see that we're retaining the opposition instruction that we applied from the beginning and i've also not included any instruction for the striker so looking at the trigger press trigger press is set for the fullback because i am expecting the goalkeeper to either play the ball to either of these two people so that's why i'm choosing the fullback to trigger press and then type mark the central defender that way the goalkeeper doesn't play the ball the goalkeeper sees that he's marked and then plays the ball to this other player but i'm seeing that ryan mclaughlin is also out of shape out of condition his condition is quite poor so i'm I'm itching to trigger pressing right now. That's also another, another indicator I use to try and see the player that is, that is running out of air. The player that is tired the most. I tend to trigger press as well because it's easy for you to it's easy for you to win the ball off them. I'm just going to leave him blank for some reason and they'll just allow him run his legs out. At some point they're going to stop that player anyway, so you have to be careful when you're trying to apply trigger press to those players that are tired. So back to the game then. Let's see how everything goes. Ball is back to Tyler. Hmm. Long ball forward. That's a lovely ball for my goalkeeper. And he's not even a super keeper. Oh, that's beautiful. Pinchard. Thompson. Pin oh, he's lost it tomorrow. He's got it back. He's got it back. That's wonderful. And I did not even apply any close down more instruction. Header! Oops, over the bar. So you notice when you're applying opposition instruction that the AI is going to make changes. So you have to always keep always keep checking your opposition instruction or your, yeah your opposition instructions instructions and then make sure that anybody that is subbed on you actually have an eye on them also because that's kind of where you can lose games if you can't pay attention to the substitution that the ai just made you might just end up losing the game looking at the subs that they just put we can see that the the player that was subbed on is their striker the striker is the player that they took off and knowing that we're not actually putting a trigger press on the striker we do not have a problem having the striker just be by himself so there's no problem let's just go all the way back to the game and try and continue and see what we actually have more, most of the everything is working in our favor thanks to this opposition instruction so and looking at the team that i use i think actually it's a very young squad i hope mokam don't score because it's going to just really embarrass me right now oh they're trying to create chances good recovery very good recovery i actually like how my players are. I, i'm in case you didn't already know let me just pause the game because shit happens when I don't pause the game. I'm going to do something else. So, pause. Pause. Minute for a second. Let's breathe. Looking at the tactic that we're using, we're using a blank 442, flat, no instructions for anybody, no instructions for the team. Familiarity is non existent and we're still somehow in, we're still somehow not conceding yet because I'm also like feeling worried that we haven't scored, but what's more important for me or what's more standard for me here is the fact that we haven't yet conceded a goal so it seems that we're doing something right defensively and we're doing quite well in the xg department we can see 0 0.74 and yeah we're expected to win the game considering how we're playing or how well we're playing i hope that more comes not just nip us in the bud so showing those players to their weaker foot quite helps and then type marking certain players like their playmaker it means they're not really able to create chances and then you kind of like show them out wide so those players are cutting inside here saunders he's able to cut inside oh he was almost he was almost able to get a chance there and that would have been really really frustrating so more common kind of playing they're growing into the game now you can see it and i think my players are getting tired it's going to something to actually watch out for is it's interesting to also make changes and try and bring changes into the game try and confuse the opposition's ois a bit so i'm going to make a substitution real soon try and swap Bunch for somebody else 
make a substitution for a striker Jay Bailey okay he's a youngster as well he's a region so hopefully he's going to have a good performance today but all those blocks tight marking shown to weaker foot helps you stop those crosses and you can see that my team is actually stopping a lot of crosses I hope that this game ends nil nil or one nil in my favor because we've done quite well defensively I have to admit Morecambe are a stronger side compared to Hereford. I think this is my second season in this particular division and although we almost got promoted, we kind of fell short. That happens to me a lot in football manager, I don't know why. So let's just see, here's a chance. Ooh, blocked. He should have played that through ball though. Why? Why did he hesitate? Ah, away. Corner. Okay, here's a chance from Pritchard. Oh, headed away. Too easy. I haven't actually set any set piece instructions, so I don't expect anything from corners. Leathers. Lovely ball. Ashley Seal. There it is. 1 0. Benny Ashley Seal. Let's go. Let's go. Wait, is it offside? No. 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 Oh, come on. Come on, ref. So we had our one goal, but it was chopped off for some reason, and I feel deflated. And it will be worse if Morkham end up scoring. So we have to block everything. Lovely block there. Ah, here's a chance to go on the counter-attack. I love that pass. I noticed that my striker needs a lot of help in the middle. And I'm tempted to try and include an attacking midfielder in there. To try and shift one of the strikers and drop him deeper. To play in the midfield a bit or to connect with the midfield. But that's an idea for another tactic anyway. I'm using a flat for 4 2 today with no instructions. So that's why. We've, we've been able to score a goal where it was chopped off and we have, you can see that Morgan have a lot of players in the middle as well so they're trying to compress it and force us out wide Ooh, lovely save and we have players always ready to try and mop up those loose balls having good opposition instructions helps you get players in good positions as well to try and mop up the loose balls and it helps you a lot so we've dominated the game but we've not been able to score a goal we're five minutes to the end of the game now and hopefully there will be a chance Pritchard and Pinchard has played so well today. I'm looking to make a substitution. Thompson might go off. Let's take something from Matt Burgess. Burgess. It's Burgess, right? Burgess. Okay. Burgess is going to come on in. That's Price. Denny. Lovely block. Oh, he's giving it. Oh! Our position instructions worked against us there. Wait. He's offside. Lovely. He's allowed. Oh, I love that. But you can see the tight marking from Saunders. It helped him stop that ball, but he gave it just he gave it away. And then the player was through on goal, which is which is really, really strange. I kinda like that view though. So Morkham are also growing into the game. So both of us have scored, but no goals. No goals so far. Yes, Kuya. Funny story, I did expect to lose this game, but we are somehow still in it. So those long balls over the top aren't really getting us somewhere. They helped us get a goal, but since then we haven't actually gotten anything but you can see that type marking is making the AI always think always try to think of where to play the ball because everybody's marked I have all those players in lockdown so it's the final hours lovely win there from Kuya if you have somebody on type marking somebody's always there to try and win the second ball that's why I like using these instructions put the trigger press on keep a player on somebody but my crosses aren't really going anywhere, so no output. Lovely from Holmes, and there's Pinchard to Bailey. Ashley still make that run. Pinchard to Spittle. Spittle's got it. Blocked. Spittle is a region as well, right? Yep, number seven. Flat 4 2 might work. <laughs> Something I'm going to look towards anyway. So the game is almost over. Hopefully, they will not score. Show him, show him, show him out wide. Lovely, show him out. There's Crossdale, saved by Tyler. I like how Saunders has been shown out wide because he's expected to be the one to cut inside, but showing him out wide makes him just lose concentration and then pass to somebody else. Here's Saunders again. They stopped him at source. Cool, yeah, lovely. Yellow card. Ah, we'll take it. So this is bad. Free kicks up piece. No routine has been set. I hope this doesn't fire back against us. Oh, lovely idea. Okay. Bruffy, Price, Saunders blocked that's what we like to see very good defensive job here anyway so the game is almost up and here is the corner last minute please don't do this don't do this ah oh, saved and that's the game no no we we're able to hold our own against more 
by the way, creating chances as well. We had a higher XG and, than they did. And then we had a lot of possession as well with no instruction. But not how you're able to hold possession without having any instructions. In case you want to know how, apply those opposition instructions I just showed you. It might help you just win the ball back and be in control of the game most of the time. So that's basically how I apply opposition instructions in the matches I'm able. That's what I do in-game every week, especially. That's how I approach my opposition instructions. So if you found this video useful, remember to leave a subscribe. Remember to hit the subscribe button as well to get notifications for new videos. And also hit the like button as well. Let me know what you think in the comment section if you need more insight on opposition instruction. Also, if you know something I don't about OIs, remember to leave it and remember to let me know in the comment section as well. And I will, will also... We'll all learn from football manager together. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.